Oh. God. <laughs> oh, well, that was not what I had in mind. Was the f ear rape. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna get killed for that one. G'day folks, Jordan here, and welcome to another software overview video. Today we're exploring Ubuntu 5.04 Hori Hedgehog from 2005. Specifically, its release date is 8th of April 2005. Now, I'm not exploring the final release of Ubuntu 4.10 in this video because it's extremely similar to the beta which I explored in my previous software overview video, which if you haven't seen that video yet, I do recommend that you go up to the top corner of your screen, like somewhere up in this area, you'll see the card pop up. But anyway, the similarities between the beta and the final release are so similar that there's just no point in actually making a video showing off the final release. You can find other videos on YouTube showing those off. However, I am going to explore 5.04, which is the successor to 4.10, of course. Now, there isn't too terribly much different between the two releases. However, there are some good notable improvements. For one, there's an update manager which was one of the big features, so you could easily update the operating system with security updates. There was also Hibernate and Standby support, which was pretty important, of course. It also had dynamic frequency scaling for processors, so for example, if you had a speed step processor, it wouldn't constantly run at 100% clock speed all the time. It would actually natively, or at least somewhat natively, support the speed step technology. I think that's what that means. If not, let me know in the comments section below. Kindly, of course. There's also the Ubuntu Hardware Database application, which we'll also explore because it's interesting to say the least. It also has APT authentication and a Kickstart installation. I don't know what the Kickstart installation means in particular, but forgive me for not knowing. And in addition, this is also the first version of Ubuntu that allowed installation from USB. So if you had a USB hard drive, a USB zip drive, no, that wouldn't fit on a zip drive unless you had a 750 meg. Uh, what I meant to say was, yeah, like a USB flash drive, USB hard drive, or something else that ran off USB, like a USB CD-ROM drive, or something of that nomenclature you could install Ubuntu from it and it would be supported for the most part. And in addition, one notable change as well was the character encoding. It was standardized to UTF-8 or UTF-8. I don't know how you're supposed to say that, but at least that's something of a notable improvement. I don't know what they formatted the text with prior, but at least they came to some kind of a standard. So that's what they used ever since Ubuntu 5.04 anyway. So with that having been said, let's go ahead and hop into this. I already have the ISO in here. And I'm not going to bother showing off my configuration that I use because it's exactly the same as what I used in my last software review video showing off Ubuntu 4.10 beta. So I'm just going to skip ahead to when we start the setup process. And here we go. So one notable difference between the final release of Ubuntu 4.10 and this is the setup screen looks slightly different. It just lets you know the default installation is suitable for most desktop or laptop systems, so you should just press enter. But if you want a more bare bones installation without a graphical user interface or something, you can type in server. Because at this time, as far as I'm aware, there was no dedicated server release, so you had to type in at this prompt server, for example, and then it would install the server release. But since we're going to be just doing a basic overview video, we're just going to go ahead and press enter. And as you can see, it starts working. And here we are at the setup, again, text mode setup, because we are not fancy enough to have the graphical setup yet, because that was not until Ubuntu 6.06 .06 that we got the fancy graphical setup process, or at least that's what I remember. Anywho, so let's go ahead and get started here. Your keyboard is American English. Yeah, we know that. So in this setup, there are a couple of differences, nothing really major. Really one of the major differences is the fact that it makes you set up your time zone and your user accounts before you restart. Unlike in Ubuntu 4.10, where they made you set that stuff up after you restarted in that little text mode setup thing that you did. Uh, if anybody's watched my last video, you'd know what that looks like. Or if you've ever installed Ubuntu 4.10, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, it's been just changed to this other, this first setup part before 
the restart actually occurs. So yeah. So here's one of the differences, as you can see, it wants me to punch in my time zone, which is in this case Pacific, and set up a user account. So we'll go ahead and do that here. And this is another difference, it hides the password. I don't remember if this was this way in the final Ubuntu, but I don't believe it was, I think they changed it. And as you can see, it's configuring apt, and it's also, I guess, figuring out all the update things, which no longer work, of course, because this Ubuntu release is so old which, you know, it's kind of expected. And now it reboots. So again, it boots in text mode, which is to be expected because, yeah, that doesn't come until the next release where we get the graphical uh, environment on boot up. So now, it one notable difference also is that this automatically copied all of the libraries that it needs to install and expand to the hard drive. And there's all those lovely hardware errors that VMware likes to spit out. So it'll automatically, as you can see, get started with configuring all the libraries that it needs to install. It just indexed them all there on the screen. And now it's going to get to work on configuring them. You don't actually have to do this from the CD because they're already on the hard drive. So I don't actually have to do anything. So at this point, I can go ahead and pause the video and I will resume at a later point. Oh yes, everybody's favorite utility, X Windows. <laughs> okay, so I... Uh... I was testing this operating system earlier before I made this video, and uh, I got a pretty funny little bloopers clip with dinking with the resolution. Uh, this is the reason why I don't touch this. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and roll the footage now. Okay, so let's see. Can we actually do 1280 by 800? Let's see if we can make this look a little better. Uh, oh, oh, that's uh, mm, that's good. <laughs> that's a good resolution. <laughs> It works fine. Don't worry about it. It looks great. This would be perfect for a YouTube video. So as you can see, yeah, it's pretty horrible what ends up actually happening. And one thing I also want to disclose is that there is a notable audio problem. So, oh god, voice crack. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my speakers right now and uh, I'm going to make sure the volume's turned up. Now, there's no real practical purpose for what I'm about to let you guys listen to. The only reason why I'm doing this is because I want to disclose that this kind of is broken when it comes, oh goodness, excuse me, to VMware, and that there's a problem with the sound at the lock screen where, um, well, I'll just shut up and I'll let you listen to it once it gets to it, but it's very uh, ear rapey, we'll just put it that way. Obviously, the audio is going to be compressed by the time we get to it, but yeah. Just figured I'd disclose it right away for those headphone users who are watching my video with headphones on. Ugh. God, that scares me every time. I turned the volume down on my speakers because I decided, let's not ear rape everybody, but I put that precaution in there anyway just in case it ended up being louder than it actually was going to be. Because you never know with VMware. But it's supposed to play this bongo drum sound. That's how the early Ubuntus denoted that they were started up. But in VMware, it makes this horrible staticky noise, which is unbelievably loud. So I had to unplug my headphones so that way I wouldn't get ear raped because it's awful. So I just figured I'd point that out. Also, another difference that I'm going to point out is the login screen looks a little bit different from Ubuntu 4.10. So there's your little visual comparison there between the two. It's not really anything noteworthy of a new video, so that's why I didn't bother. So let's go ahead and log in here. Hopefully my mouse is not screwy with this. I did some prior testing. It seemed to be fine, but again, I don't know. It might have just been a quirk of the 4.10 beta that I was using. Now, since the sound is working, there's actually a really lovely startup sound that plays. And no, I don't think there's going to be any ear rape, so I'm going to go ahead and crank the volume, but it's a pretty, ple uh, pretty pleasant little startup sound that was actually in Ubuntu 4.10 beta, but the sound thing wasn't working, but it actually plays now, and so I figured since I haven't played the Ubuntu startup sound at this point in time, I'll let you all listen to it now. So as you could hear, 
the startup sound is actually pretty pleasant. It's pretty quiet because the volume in the virtual machine is turned down. But there's also a little denotation on the splash screen that said Linux for human beings, which I believe is how they marketed Ubuntu at the time. And in fact, they actually go a little bit more into detail about this on the main little splash screen that you see here in Firefox, talking about the definition of Ubuntu as being humanity to others. And um, they talk about Ubuntu Linux as a complete open source operating system built around the Linux kernel. There. Now that should answer everybody's question about whether Linux is a kernel or an operating system. They even mention this right here in the documentation. So there's absolutely no excuse why you can't call Linux a kernel and not an operating system and fight about it in all the YouTube comment sections. There. There's your proof. I found it. Anyway, enough of that. That is actually, when I, I'll go back into Firefox, you have to turn that up. That is actually one of the differences that I was going to show you is Firefox is now version 1. Uh, previously, it was a pre-release version of Firefox that was included in Ubuntu. So, just figured I'd point that out. There's also this really nice and elegant looking splash wallpaper. At least I think that's what they call it was splash. Or Sparkle, that's what it was called. I thought it was Splash. Maybe that was a later release. I don't know. Also, one thing that's worth pointing out is some of the sound effects are bongo drums when you access the menus or launch some applications. So if the MacBook Pro fan isn't going to be too overwhelming, I'll go ahead and I'll try to see if I can replicate some of those sound effects now. Uh, here's a password prompt that I think this was new in 5.04 or 4.10, one of the two, where it asks you to put in your password to run a command as sudo. So here's the update manager. This is one of the applications I was going to show you. So as you can see, it goes to download some files, and then it just says this distribution is no longer supported. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see any updates here. But... That doesn't really matter anyway because, well, this is such an old version of Ubuntu. I'm really surprised it still connects. But yet, this is one of the new applications that was included in Ubuntu 5.04. Now, let's see what other ones could we include um, or what was included. Um, they fixed the settings menu. So now all the settings that you would ever care for are actually in a preferences panel rather than being screwed up between both the administration and the preferences panel like it was in 4.10. So... They actually fixed it at this stage, which is pretty nice. And also one thing that's interesting to look at is the login screen setup, which also needs to run in sudo. Let's see, which one was it? The graphical greeter, there it was. There's a theme built in called Human Circle of Friends, and uh, that's really interesting because the preview is not the same as what's actually displayed on the login screen. Don't know why this is, but it was that way. But anyway, I'm not going to bother showing it because there's no point. It would just take you back to the login screen and play the e-rape once again, which is not fun. Trust me, I about did that myself earlier. Oh! God! <laughs> uh, well, that was not what I had in mind. Was the e-rape. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get killed for that one. So I'm not gonna try to do that again and then mess up on my password. So there's some other notable differences like I mentioned. And also another difference is that OpenOffice has a slightly different release. There's no splash screen anymore, which is pretty interesting. Oh, there is a splash screen. There's no longer a Debian logo on it, which was from the beta. I thought that was pretty funny that they left the Debian logo in there, but now the Debian logo is gone. And somehow the date went back to 2003 on OpenOffice. I don't know why, because the one in uh, 4.10 beta was 2004, so I'm not sure why that went back to 2003, but anyway. Also, one of the notable differences that I can think of off the top of my head was the places menu is new because in previous releases that I've explored, or at least you know the last one I looked at on video, the uh, places catalog, or places catalog, places menu more rather, was actually in the system menu which is pretty interesting and now there's actually an about panel that actually loads which i guess it's still loading some help topics i don't know but yeah ubuntu linux this is basically just talks about everything that it was talking about inside of uh firefox's splash screen there 
Otherwise, in terms of all the applications, it's pretty much the same. I guess we could look at GIMP, which is a different release in this video, or in this video, this operating system. I'm just not talking today. But yeah, this is a different version than what was in 4.10 but I couldn't show it in the 4.10 video because I didn't want to try to change the screen resolution. Well, actually, I couldn't change the screen resolution. I think it was version 2.1 in the last version of Ubuntu, but as you can see, here's GIMP. It works fine. And uh, let's see, Evolution probably has a different version, but I'm not going to bother setting that up today. Um, we already know OpenOffice was a different version. There's a couple of different icons on some of these sound and video programs. For example, the volume monitor and the recording level monitor, they have new icons. The CD player, I think, has a different icon. Same thing with the music player and whatnot. I think those all have different icons on them. And uh, the bug report tool is still there. One thing I was also going to look at was this Ubuntu device database program. And as you can see, it's just a little self-contained thing. This is the Ubuntu hardware database collection tool. It obtains all possible data about your hardware, performs certain self-tests, and asks you some questions about the auto-detected values. The collected data is submitted to the central Ubuntu hardware database for building a web-based information resource about supported hardware. Developers utilize the collected data to fine-tune auto-detection and improve Ubuntu hardware support. By submitting your hardware information to the central Ubuntu database, you will have online access to your data in the future. No personal user information will be collected or transmitted through this process. And it thanks you for helping to improve Ubuntu. So as you can hear, it does an audio test first and foremost, and yes, that does work. I can't click the forward button for some reason, I don't know why. There we go. Is your video display hardware working properly? Detected settings is 1024 by 768 at 60 hertz. Yes, that's fine. Is your mouse working properly? Yeah, it seems to be working properly, a bit slow, but that's just the quirk of the VM. And as you can see, the network test works because it pings properly and plays a little ding sound effect for each one. Yes, the network's working. Is your keyboard working properly? I don't know. I guess it does. <laughs> and then please fill in additional comments below. And then once you press forward once again, if it will let me press forward once again, come on. There we go. There is the old style Ubuntu progress bar there. And then once this finishes, it just asks you to press OK to send the data. Unfortunately, this utility no longer works, as to be expected, it no longer works because, of course, I think nowadays they automatically collect all this data. You don't have to send it to them yourself. And, of course, it doesn't work. The hilarious thing is it says, the data will get dropped to your desktop. Please send it as mail attachment to hwdb at ubuntu.com. So I guess if somebody really was interested in letting the Ubuntu devs know about their hardware, they could definitely send it to their email. It gets dropped as this .bz2 file um, in XML format. So you could email that as an email attachment off to the Ubuntu developers, and then they could use that to help improve the operating system. So other than that, those are some of the notable differences between uh, 4.10 beta and 5.04. Otherwise, pretty much everything else is the same, including the Minesweeper game, which has those horrible faces. An even better one, which I didn't even show either, which is pretty sad because I, I did not see this one. But anyway, I'm surprised I have not lost a game yet. How have I not lost a freaking game yet? I don't even know. Ah, there we go. Even better. Alright, so that's about it for this video. There's not really much else to say. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down the virtual machine. And I just want to also take this moment to thank you all for watching. And I will see you all in a later video. It cuts off the shutdown sound, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because it's a really nice shutdown sound, too. Anywho, I guess because it, it ends one of the services that deals with the sound. And it also kindly tells you power down at the very end before it shuts off. So anyway, that's really the end of this video. So, again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.